Stone Cold Steve Austin. We are getting close to Mania season, so you're going to be hearing that name a lot more. It was WrestleVotes in talking to uh, Louis Dangor of Give Me Sport a few weeks ago who first floated the possibility that Austin could come back for another match. He said how happy Austin was with the way things went with Kevin Owens this year and how people in the company that he heard from thought that he would definitely be open to the idea of doing another match. Now we learn from Sean Ross Sapp of Fightful that WWE has been in contact with Austin about another match. This is no longer a what-if scenario. They have made contact with the man about wrestling again. They were told that while the Vince McMahon regime had hoped to have Austin come back to do another match, the Triple H regime uh, made a concrete offer for him to come back and do one. Their sources were not sure if that meant Saudi Arabia or if it meant WrestleMania, but I mean, the presumption is that it would be for WrestleMania. It's got to be WrestleMania. You've got two nights of WrestleMania in April. You're not holding Stone Cold Steve Austin out of WrestleMania to use him on a Saudi Arabia show in May. If he is coming back, it is going to, at least initially, it's going to be for WrestleMania. Now, another source indicated to Fightful that initially the two sides were far apart on terms, and that is the latest update that they had. Dave Meltzer said that there is smoke to the fire on the Austin stuff, so he backs up those reports. Austin, for his part, chimed in because he has not said anything about any of it. And these rumors started weeks ago. He has not chimed in. He has not said anything. But he chimed in on Instagram yesterday. And this is what he said. He posted a video and he was showing his workout routine. He was about to go work out. And he said, people have been speculating. Hey, Steve, what are you doing? What are you training for? Are you training for an event? He said, speculate what you want for. I just simply looked in the mirror and realized I look like shit. So I called my diet coach up and my macros are currently, give or take, roughly around 2,600 calories, 300 to 320 grams of protein, 150 grams of carbs on a regular day, will spike at 420 on a load up, I still drink beer on Friday nights, get three Broken Skull IPAs, and that's pretty much it. I'm probably, as far as body weight goes, sub 232, the leanest I've been in forever, Anyway, that's the bottom line. I'm out. I just got tired of looking like shit. When I looked in the mirror, I looked like shit. I got tired of it. So I'm taking actions to do something about it. And that's great. If somebody looks in the mirror and thinks they look like shit, then they should do something about it. But I I heard what he said there. 320 grams of protein. (laughs) Holy shit. 320 grams of protein is, is more than just, I thought I looked like shit. This man is getting himself in shape for more than just the mirror in his gym. Uh, He didn't deny it. He didn't deny it. He said, speculate if you want. I mean, look, I've been speculating about things for the past 15 years. I'm not about to stop now. Like I said before, when I look at the current active WWE roster, the man who I think would be the best fit for a feud with Steve Austin would be L.A. Knight. We saw a little bit of that on SmackDown Friday night in the segment that he did with Bray Wyatt. If they wanted to go the route of giving somebody some rub by working with Austin, he may not be the the flashiest opponent or the sexiest opponent for Austin, but it is someone who could verbally joust with him on the mic. And I want to I want to say something about this because a lot of people gave me crap when I said this last week. So this is only uh, directed at those people. Okay, I'm going to do my best Zoe Stark impression from NXT this week. I'm going to I'm going to cut my own you people promo here. You people seem to forget that in 1996 there was a man by the name of Steve Austin, and this man was floundering. First, he was the ringmaster. He was on the road to nowhere. Then he changed his name to Stone Cold. He dumped Ted DiBiase. He won the King of the Ring. He cut that iconic Austin 316 speech, and then nothing. Nothing. He wrestled Yokozuna in the pre-show match at SummerSlam that year. A lot of people think that he cut that promo and it launched him into the stratosphere. It didn't. What elevated him is when he started calling out Bret the Hitman Hart. Here's Steve Austin, a guy who had done next to nothing in that company, calling out one of the biggest stars in the entire promotion. And Bret ended up working with him twice, once at Survivor Series and again at WrestleMania, even if that wasn't the original plan. 
He gave Austin the biggest break of his career. Austin will be the first one to tell you that, how, how big it was for his career to work that program with Bret Hart. There's no reason they couldn't work a similar angle with L.A. Knight, calling Austin out on television in the months leading up to WrestleMania, angling to get him back in the ring for one more match. There are bigger names for him to work against. All I'm saying is it is not as far-fetched as some people may think. Kevin Owens was fantastic this year. He carried that entire storyline because Austin never showed up on television once. He sent in a video. That was it. Kevin Owens was cutting promos on himself every week. But if WWE wants to go for the biggest possible attraction they can for Steve Austin, yeah, I know people are fantasy booking a match with CM, <laughs> CM Punk. With CM Punk, 10 years too late. That would have been fantastic in 2011 and 2012. 10 years too late. I would be more worried if Punk could hold up physically more than I would Austin, given how injury-prone he's turned out to be this year. There was a note in this week's Observer that Punk's rehab for the torn triceps is said to be going really well. That's still an injury that I think would make WrestleMania very unlikely. And even if he was cleared, if he was physically cleared to compete, he is still under contract to AEW. I cannot I could just cannot imagine Tony Khan buying him out or letting him go without some sort of non-compete that would at least get them past WrestleMania. So, fantasy book all you want. Steve Austin is not wrestling CM Punk at WrestleMania. Another Steve Austin Rock match? That would be fun. I, I will never get tired of Stone Cold and The Rock, and it hasn't been done in 20 years, but they're both 20 years older than they were the last time we saw them in the ring together. And the only match, and I've said this before, I'll keep saying it, the only match that Rock is coming back for if he ever wrestles again is against Roman Reigns. You don't have to like the match. You don't have to approve of it. The mere thought of it might bore you to tears. If The Rock does come back to wrestle again next year, the year after, he is only coming back for a match with Roman Reigns. He's not going to come back and wrestle Steve Austin. Plus, if you can get Rock and Austin back, you don't feud them with each other. You get two big matches out of it instead of one. You got two nights of WrestleMania. You headline each night, one with The Rock and one with Steve Austin. Brock Lesnar's name has been thrown around. Are these people out of their minds? Of all the people to put almost 60-year-old Steve Austin in the ring with with a bad neck, you're going to put him in the ring with the German suplex machine? That leaves one name, and that's John Cena. The battle of the Attitude Era and the PG Era. The PG Era is where Cena cemented himself as a Hall of Famer. Not, not the Ruthless Aggression Era, which is why I said the PG Era. I can see the appeal in Austin against Cena. And Cena's a much safer opponent for Austin than Brock Lesnar would be. If they headline night one with Roman Reigns and The Rock, and night two with Austin and Cena, yeah, obviously that would be huge. I say Rock and Roman on night one just because I would expect Roman to win. And do they really want Roman Reigns as the heel to close out the final night of WrestleMania three years in a row? Uh, if it's for the title, then yes. But otherwise, I, I think they could get by headlining night two with something else. Now, though, Logan Paul has thrown his name in the hat for a match with John Cena at WrestleMania. We don't even know if John Cena is working a match at WrestleMania. And he already has three potential opponents in Steve Austin, Logan Paul, and Austin Theory. Logan Paul said that he has already sexted Triple H, or texted, Jesus Christ, texted, <laughs> I want to be spreading rumors now, texted Triple H about it. And he asked Triple H, are you ready to break the internet again? So he's hurt right now. He had to cancel a boxing fight that he had scheduled for January. The only thing he said about the knee injury is that it could have been worse. His brother Jake Paul spilled the beans and said that his brother's rehab is going better than expected because it turned out to be an MCL and a meniscus injury only. It's not an ACL tear as they had initially feared it might be. And that's the key. If he tore his ACL, he would be out of WrestleMania. Without an ACL tear, it makes it more likely that he can work the show. I don't hate the idea, because he had that great match with Roman Reigns at, at Crown Jewel. I think he and John Cena would kill it, but I think Logan Paul against somebody like Randy Orton, and we don't know what his future is, but an Orton or a Seth Rollins, I think that would be the way to go for WrestleMania. But to go back to Stone Cold, uh, he got through the match with Kevin Owens. He even took a suplex in the crowd on the concrete and he made it out in one piece without getting hurt. 
Austin has been posting you know, these videos on Instagram of himself training. He hasn't, again, he has not come out and denied any of this. So it comes down to how big of an offer are they willing to make him? How badly does WWE need Steve Austin when they have already sold over 100,000 tickets between both nights of WrestleMania? That was in the span of a week. In August, they sold 100,000 tickets in August for two shows that don't take place until April. And they did it without a single match or a single name being announced for either night. They don't need Austin for that show, so are they willing to spend extra to get him? Time will tell. You know, the last Fightful uh, heard about this, the two sides were far apart on terms, but a lot can happen between now and then. But now is the time for him to start getting back in ring shape if he wants to get back in the ring. So it's not a surprise to see him on Instagram doing squats to Earth, Wind, and Fire. Actually, Earth, Wind, and Fire was a surprise. Not the squats. See, Austin in his 30s, he came to the ring to Disturbed. Austin at almost 60 should come to the ring to Earth, Wind, and Fire. It actually does make sense. Let's get some Boogie Wonderland playing at WrestleMania next year. 